Hi everyone, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, we're going to create this form right here. So let me just show you a demo of how this works. So if you take a look at the placeholder over here, and if I click on this input field, we see that uh, the placeholder goes up and it has a different background color. And if I click away from the input field, it goes back to the original place. So we have this effect with all the input fields and uh, if we type something over here and uh, if we click on the other input field it stays right there because we have a data over here and if i remove the data and if i click somewhere else it goes back to the original place so that's it with the input field and uh, then we have a submit button and then here we have a text for our form validation for example if you input an invalid email it will say that the email is invalid so this is basically what we are going to design in this video. So let's get started. In this video, we'll just focus on designing the form. And in the coming videos, I will show you how to add form validation using PHP and uh, also save the data in a database. And uh, I will also maybe create a video on emailing this whole form details to a email using our form so let's get started by writing the markup for our form i have three files in my project index.html style.css and main.js i'm using vs code so it has emmet already installed in it so i can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll get this basic html5 boilerplate so i just change uh, the title to contact us we also need to have a font so we'll go to google fonts and uh, we'll select the roboto font and uh, click on this icon and we'll just copy this code from here to our html and then we'll also link our css We'll start by creating a division with a class name of container and uh, we will include everything inside this division. So first of all, we'll create an H1 and uh, we will type contact us here. I'll just open it with live server. Then we'll create uh, the form. So we'll type form over here and we'll leave the action uh, as blank for now and we'll also give it a class of main form and uh, here we'll have an input of type text and we'll also give it an ID name and uh, we'll also give it a class of GT input now we'll create a label for our name so we'll type label and uh, it will be for our name so we have to give this id over here so we'll type name and uh, in the label we will type full name so here we have the label and uh, this is the input field now what we will do is uh, include both of these inside a division so just cut this from here and we'll create a division we will give it a class name of form group and we'll paste it over here now I'll just copy and paste this two more times and uh, we'll change this to email and for the last one we will change this to message here we'll type your message and here instead of the input field we have to give a text area because we want to have multiple lines of uh, text so we'll just delete this from here and uh, we'll type text area and we'll also give it a class of gt input and also a class of gt text so the name will be message id will be message so that's it for our um, input fields now we'll create the submit button so input type of submit and uh, 
we will give it a class of gt button and we will give it a value of submit and at last we will have a division for the, our validation status so we will create a division with a class of form status and we'll just type something over here now before the body ends we will also include our javascript file over here so we'll type script src main.js so that's basically it for our markup now we'll go to our css and start styling the form first of all we'll create some universal rules so we'll type padding 0 margin 0 box sizing of border box now we'll add some rules for our body we'll add a font family of roboto display of flex margin top of 100 pixels justify content to the center height of 100 viewport height and also a background color now we'll style the h1 so we'll give it a padding of 16 pixels font size of 22 pixels color of black text align to the center now we'll start styling the form first of all we will style the main form division and we'll give it a background color and also padding of 32 pixels and 20 pixels now we'll style the form group we'll set the position to relative and uh, margin bottom of 28 pixels now we'll style the inputs so we'll type gt input we'll give it a width of 400 pixels and uh, then a height of 48 pixels padding of 0 20 pixels font size of 20 pixels border 0 now when we click over here we have a blue border around our form so to remove that we will type gt input focus outline of none now we will also target the text area so we will type gt text and uh, here we will type padding of 10 pixels 20 pixels height of 100 pixels and width of 100 percent now we will style the label so we'll type label over here and we'll set the position to absolute we'll set the font size to 18 pixels set the color to aaa then we'll also give it a transition so we'll set the transition of all to 0 0.4 seconds now we'll move our placeholder to the center of our uh, input field vertically so for that we can type top 24 pixels transform translate y and we'll set it to minus 50% so it sits right in the middle of our uh, text field and now we'll set our margin left to 24 pixels we'll also set the cursor to text now we'll style the button so we'll type dot gt button and we'll give it a width of 100% height of 60 pixels font size of 20 pixels text transform to uppercase we'll set a letter spacing of 4 pixels we'll set the border to 0 color of the text to white and the background color to 00485a and we'll also give it a transition of 0.4 seconds now we'll style the hover for our button so we'll just type gt button hover and we want to change the background color so we'll just give it a background color of 01708b so here we can see our button we'll also change the cursor to pointer so here we can see our button now we'll style the status of our uh, form so here we will type form 
status and we'll give it a padding of 8 pixels text align to the center color of white margin top of 8 pixels and margin bottom of minus 24 pixels so here we can see our status now the last thing remaining is to create a class uh, for the placeholder to move up right here so for that we will create a class called move up and uh, we'll also add this class over here so that we can just test it out so for our label we will give a class name called move up so here we'll type margin top of minus 32 pixels margin left of 0 pixels font size of 14 pixels background color of ff0000 border radius of 8 pixels and uh, 0 color of the text to white padding of 4 pixels and 8 pixels and a minimum width of 100 pixels now the only thing we need to do is to add and remove this class using javascript so let's just get rid of this class over here and uh, now we'll go to our javascript and uh, write some code over here now first of all we'll reference our gt input class so we'll create a constant and we'll type gt input and uh, here we'll type document dot query selector all because we have multiple elements with the same class and uh, here we will type dot gt input all right so now we have to loop through all our uh, uh, gt inputs so we'll type for let i equals zero i is less than gt input dot length and i plus plus and inside our loop we have to access the label for that input for example if you are working with this input right here then we have to target this label and for the input of email we have to target the label for email so for that we have to first of all uh, access the parent element and uh, then the first child element so let me show you how we can do that so first of all let's create a variable current label so this will store our current label so we'll type gt input and uh, we'll type i over here because it loops from 1 to the length of uh, the array dot parent element so this will uh, target this form group over here and uh, then we have to type first element child so this will target the label for the current input now when we click inside our uh, text box we want to add a class called move up so for that here we will type gt input i dot add event listener and uh, we have to listen to the focus event we'll create a function over here and here we will type current label dot class list dot add and we'll add the class of move up so if I click over here we can see we have this move up class it works with all our inputs but now here we can see that when we click outside we don't have the class being removed so for that we have to just copy this three lines of code and instead of focus here we can type blur and uh, instead of adding the class we'll remove the class so now if you click over here we have this class being added and when we click out of here the class uh, gets removed now we have a slight problem over here where uh, the the label is below our uh, text box so we just set the z index for our label so we'll set the z index to 1 here we can see our uh, placeholder and uh, the input field 
we have successfully added and removed the class move up from our label but uh, there's one more thing we need to do so if we just type something over here and if you go to the next text field we can see that the placeholder goes back to the original place so we also have to check whether the text field is empty so in here we have to add an if condition so if gt input i dot value is equal to blank so now only if the value of our text field is blank the class will be removed otherwise the class will stay there so we'll just type something over here and if i click over here the class is not being removed and if i click away from the input field the class is removed because we don't have any value in our email field just add a value over here and check it out so here we can see the email placeholder stays where it is so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day